Sí. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Jiu Chu uh, from Google. I'm here to present the uh, uh, user space TCP work we have uh, been doing for the past uh, nine months with my uh, uh, co-author, uh, Liu Yan, uh, sitting on, in the back. Um, and um, first of all, a little uh, disclaimer. Um, so we, uh, this work is based on an open source project that's been there for many years. Um, called LKL, Linux Kernel Library. Uh, but uh, we are not in no way expert. We, you know, we actually, LKL show up on our radar screen. Uh, when we uh, start funding this project uh, late last year, um, but um, you know, it looks like there, there's a very good LKL paper that's written, uh, published in 2010. Um, and we, most of our knowledge, so we, we, uh, you know, we pick up a lot of you know, um, uh, knowledge and you know, we, we understand the code a fair amount and we contribute a lot in the past year, but we are in no way knowing all the history of all the design trade-off all the you know, good and bad. So if you have you know problem with uh, yeah, okay, I'll please uh, you know um, send email to the original uh, the, the current maintainer actually. Um, so um, user speed TCP. So why are we doing user speed TCP? You know there are a lot of user speed TCP out there, right? Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. There's uh, you know um, uh, benefit. You know, there is usually the the, the majority of the user TCP implementation out there, you know, either commercially or open source project, they, um, their, their aim is at providing a higher performance, especially for you know, HPC application, you know, high performance um, or low latency, super low latency uh, application case. Uh, the claim or the belief is the kernel overhead is too, too much to get really a low latency. Um, but our use case is actually different at Google. Uh, we, uh, the performance, high performance, super low latency is not our initial goal, although it would be nice to have to reach our next set of customer, but our initial uh, use case is to terminate the gas packet or gas TCP connection from the VM uh, when the gas is going, uh, well, this is a gas connection to the Google backend service. And there's a number of motivation for this. Um, you know, the security model, some believe, is uh, because it's user space, it's a single process, one process, or you can run multiple instances of the kernel, or the kernel code, or the stack code in the user space. But you know, the vulnerability is isolated into a single process uh, instead of the whole kernel. And also, um, it's, you know, um, well, um, is widely believed that the uh, release uh, velocity is much higher. You can patch the user code much quicker, at least at Google, than the kernel code. Um, and also, the uh, separate the, the well using the uh, process to run the kernel code, the, the stack code, the accounting is much more accurate, right? We all know the networking stack in the kernel use a lot of background thread, you know, IRSR LQ process, and you know, sometimes the accounting is not very very accurate. Um, so these are the set of motivation. Um, and uh, I already mentioned the, oh, so for this reason, there actually are quite a few number of uh, user space TV stack uh, at Google. And a lot of them are um, created from scratch, you know, homegrown. Uh, they tend to be very small and work for a specific use case. Um, but when um, when the use case when uh, when the use case grow, uh, many of them tend to fall apart. Uh, I remember one case uh, that our um, first use case, our first customer, we trying to replace their homegrown TV stack. Uh, they, their stack is to terminate the gas VM, uh, the gas TV connection. Um, when uh, a few years back, when first Windows um, VM show up, all of a sudden they break because they. It's a very simple implementation only to the mandatory TCP option, um, the MSS option. So I think one version of Windows that insists on um, 
even though you negotiate out, you know, insist on window, either Windows 10, uh, the timestamp, I think it's timestamp option. So uh, the style, the, the Hong Kong style didn't do that and it fall apart. So um, my goal, you know, to uh, solve this internal problem where this Hong Kong style doesn't, you know, it's not really production uh, strength, is to find a high quality TV style. Not, not necessarily high performing TV style. Uh, so I set my side on the you know all the mature TV style that I know of is all kernel based, um, you know Linux or BSD or Solaris. Um, so I, you know, obviously I have a you know I work for Google. I have a preference for Linux kernel style. Um, so the question is, how do we run Linux kernel uh, or kernel code in user space? Uh, so you guys are probably familiar with uh, you know, a number of uh, technology, you know, Linux even, or the upstream tree even have the usable Linux uh, support. Um, we sort of evaluate, you know, debate a little bit, but I guess you know, we didn't really have all the expertise to really have a foresight which one is the best through, uh, approach. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, back then, LibOS first show up and LKL. So we just, you know, we, since we, we prefer Linux based uh, kernel code, and we love the kernel code. We, uh, you know, Google contribute a lot to, um, you, you guys heard about BBR, right? It contributes a lot to the Linux TGP stack. So um, we uh, pretty much, uh, um, you know, choose the liberal, well, initially we actually play with liberal as, uh, you know, we work with Hatchimi a little bit on it because the, that, seem to match better with what we wanted in mind, uh, which is we really love the TCP code, and how can we just take the TCP code, right, and uh, you know, not have to be bound by the rest of the kernel, either overhead or constraint. Um, but that actually, that thought is kind of, can be a little hairy, because where do you draw the boundary, right? And we actually, uh, playing with li LibOS a little bit for a couple months, and I think it was pretty good for simulation purpose, but we, then we hit a bunch of bugs, uh, because the LibOS seemed to be fitting, you know, it has a good code, it carve out, the, uh, carve out the TV code, sort of, but it has a good code to you know, handle the, memory, uh, the SKB alloc or memory, memory allocator or the timer, or the, and those areas tend, be, tend to be very, um, Hairy and buggy. So um, we spent a couple months, then the LKR came along. It was sort of announced, even though it has been there for a few years. Um, and we, uh, I think Hajime also, uh, you know, we feel LKR is more mature, so we decided to switch to LKR. Uh, for those who, um, uh, I don't know how many people have heard about this uh, open source project, it's all of three. But this is a simple picture to summarize the, uh, basically it's a Linux kernel code. And um, it has a very um, thin layer of a good code to go uh, the syscall, um, well, to sort of, um, well, I will describe later, you know, the syscall pretty much is, you know, Linux syscall, right? And in the submissive model, when an application call into the LKL, it just call into the function symbol. but there's a set of good code, it need to do something more than just call into the function. And uh, um, the, the main um, environment dependent code, uh, we call it host operation code, is it, it's it's defined as a set of ops, right? The, uh, when you uh, take the LKR code, so one of the second point, the original uh, author, he wanted to run Linux code in the uh, Windows environment, for example, non non Linux environment. So um, one one only need to supply this set of uh, host operation ops, uh, then it will it can it will work. So the uh, uh, it, it's done. It's designed as a port of Linux kernel and and, the, and uh, its uh, architecture. Uh, it creates a new architecture called LKL, and it's about thirty five hundred line code in LKL. Um, and application just link with this uh, library code, and uh, the the syscall interface remains the same, right? But instead of syscall, you know, taking a trap here is sort of function call into LKL, 
and uh, you know, uh, one can even do a LD preload to hijack uh, without application code change to run, um, run with the LKL library. And so the, the top interface is, is called the button interface. Uh, the packing interface is very well on that. So it's, uh, it's pretty uh, simple. Our main use case um, is um, uh, pretty much this uh, TCP reverse proxy. So I, as I described, we, want to, we have to terminate uh, the gas TCP connection to our backend proxy service. Um, so um, the proxy here, I show you um, the hypervisor you know, running, the VM running inside hypervisor. Uh, the packet is going out through a variable net and then uh, talk to a proxy. This proxy um, can run either locally uh, on the same machine as the VM or remotely. And um, the proxy then uh, terminate, the LKR okay, terminate this TCP connection from the gas and then the application, the, the proxy will extract the data you know, and then you know, this could be a, a RPC re request. It will then go to the host, you know, do whatever, right? It can open the last socket uh, to the host kernel and start doing, you know, if, it, if the backend protocol is based on TCP IP or in some case, you know, our backend is on a totally different transport, even kernel bypass, uh, it can run directly on top of that. So the beige color is the kernel stack. Um, so the LKL takes the whole kernel code, run, you know, has everything in. It, I think there's, a, I'm going to show you, there's a pros and cons. Um, the cons is, unfortunately, it has an architectural constraint imposed by this approach. Uh, what will happen is, uh, since we are not just you know, carving out TCP code and uh, doing all the other stuff in the native host, host environment, um, the application thread cannot, well, in making a syscall, right? And syscall, in the specific model, the syscall here is a LKL library, uh, the function symbol, right? You just call that function symbol. But unfortunately, you cannot, we cannot allow, uh, you know, the LKL cannot allow the host thread code directly into the LKL kernel ask you code because normally, you know, maybe 90% it will work, but when the code, LKL code actually come into like a blocking condition, it need to go to, the scheduler need to come in, you know, the thread need to go to sleep, the, the LKL kernel scheduler have no idea about this foreign thread. This is really a, a thread created by the host environment, right? Um, so the solution uh, was um, to, um, f to not allow a uh, host thread called directly into LKL code. Instead, the, uh, it, will put, you know, it will create a request and uh, uh, wake up uh, LKL kernel thread that can ask you, because LKL kernel thread, so during the boot, you know, there will be a set of LKL kernel thread created. Um, Actually, it's created by uh, on demand, but this thread is created by LKL kernel code. So kernel knows how to handle this. You know, it has a valid stack, and uh, uh, all the data structure is in place. Um, so that's the first constraint, and it has a severe performance impact on uh, on uh, um, the the network uh, TCP R and TCP throughput. Another constraint is the um, when when you um, so this is again, you know, the host thread and all the syscall, for example, buffer is created in the host environment. So one obvious constraint is the buffer address, right? This buffer is not created by the this kernel. A uh, kernel is not aware of this buffer address. Um, so a bunch of syscall, uh, well, usually if you do um, uh, write message or you know send send message or write the buffer comes in the kernel and the LKL kernel do a copying or copy iterate or whatever, right? It's low store. And this, since the in LKL, the user and kernel, they are in the same address space, low store work. So, you know, most of the case it work. But for the little fancier Cisco like VM splice, it need to actually take a look at, it, it, it take the buffer address, the user buffer address, Right, it will go and look up the 
backing uh, page. But here, there's no backing page for that back buffer address. So it, it will fail. Um, and LKL currently uh, don't support SMP. Um, I, I don't know how difficult it is to uh, get SMP working. Uh, this is one area we are interested in, uh, but you know, we, 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 we don't have a porting experience, uh, so we don't know how much work it requires. And LK obviously, you know, it's a flat uh, memory. Uh, there's no MAU, so um, there's no memory transaction. Um, so I described the contact switch because in LK, uh, the host side cannot go to LK to execute code directly. And show right away uh, from um, you know just simple guide parent pit. Um, this uh, this is a syscall, right? The host syscall. Uh, it takes only 0.4 microsecond, uh, but LKL takes 10 microsecond. It, it requires three contact switches. Uh, so we um, we uh, we actually uh, work out a solution. So in you know, our idea is the you know yes uh, the if the thread comes in and the reason the thread cannot ask you the whole thread cannot ask you LKL kernel code directly is this uh, scheduler issues, right? Um, what what it really is needed uh, for to make the LKL kernel scheduler happy is the uh, test uh, uh, test struct. Uh, these foreign side they don't have anything like that, right? Uh, so uh, one kind of hack, you know, we haven't completely proved, but so far this this uh, solution seems to work for all the socket call we experiment with is to uh, create a kernel thread, a kernel kernel thread, then follow that test struct when you do make a syscall. And that allow the syscall come in directly. And then um, when, you, uh, when you need to go to block, it, it will actually the, make the LKL schedule happy, but we have to hack the schedule code to, um, to sort of know, oh, this is uh, actually a special case. So unfortunately, this here requires the change of the generic um, kernel code. But so far this hack seemed to work and um, there's still ongoing code. Um, this code initially it was uh, done by Yuan Lu, uh, but the RKL maintainer think he can figure out a solution to make it work but without changing the generic part of the kernel code. Um, and after that, you know, that uh, parent pit uh, is just a function call for LKL. So it can get down to the point to microsecond. Uh, so we uh, we we need to come up with so for our uh, benchmark comparison, right? We are comparing against the host, and we need to come up with a configuration that's sort of apple to apple comparison. Uh, since the LKR is you know this is stuff is all in user land, right? Uh, it doesn't make sense to. Uh, uh, to run the benchmark in a configuration where you inject, you know, inject packet into, you know, maybe through 10 tab into the kernel, right? It doesn't make sense. So we uh, use um, the RDMA type of NIC and we use IB verb libraries uh, for LKL to, um, to actually um, program and uh, inject the packet directly to NIC, bypassing the kernel. Now, um, there is some gotcha here. We, want to compare against the kernel uh, stack, but it's, this setup is not really apple to apple comparison because the, the, the NIC, the device hardware feature, right, they are different. The host has the uh, TSO, hardware TSO support. The LKL here is using Infinite and we are using reliable connections. So we are uh, still an ongoing effort to actually get the uh, true apple to apple comparison, maybe close to apple to apple comparison, right? Uh, so the number you know, here I'm gonna show you, you have to take a grain of salt. Uh, we start with okay, uh, five to 10 X slower in both the um, um, latency and throughput than uh, compared to host kernel. And over the past uh, few months, we improved the uh, the number tremendously. This is latency comparison, the TCPRR. So we start with, um, this is a configuration where I showed you previously. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's running, okay, I'm running on top of our DMA NIC, and uh, this is a 40 gig NIC. Um, we start with 
more than 80 or uh, more than 90 microsecond uh, latency, uh, one byte for one byte TCPR. The host baseline is 23. And after all the work, you know, one, one of the work that helps is to, uh, you know, test set all the thread into the same core. And um, the main thing that really help is the direct syscall. Uh, instead of three contact switch, uh, we allow LKL, okay, uh, the, 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 this is not perf. So I go directly into the LKL kernel to ask you. Um, and uh, so we, our best number, well, to be a fair comparison without busy polling is 40 microseconds. So it's like 1.8x uh, of the host. Um, we believe the main gap is the, there's no hardware IRQ for the software you know, kernel stack. Uh, so every time you know, IRQ, there's IRQ, you know, they have, the code will have to uh, post IRQ, wake up a thread to handle the, you know, the request. Um, we uh, boost the bulk data transfer uh, super uh, by also um, three to five times. Um, the, the formula is simple, right? Just do a last segment and enable checks and envelope. Um, so this is one advantage of using the, having a whole kernel code there. Um, other kernel great features, right? Many of them just work. GSO, GRO actually is in the kernel already, right? We don't really have to do much with the variable device to use them. Uh, so, for example, the enable GSO is one line change in the device to enable some uh, capability hardware feature, right? Then it double super performance. Um, also, you know, if we ever need to run uh, B enable BBR, we have all the QDIS, you know, FQ you know, TCB stack, right? So this is a, a big advantage uh, of having whole kernel code. Uh, we have to implement the, G, uh, the gas, TSO, host, TSO, all the flavors. Um, so also we uh, add the support for last packet and both last packet and multiple receive buffer mode. So afterwards, throughput, um, so we we'll get a five times boost. Uh, before that, you know, it was a pathetic three gigabit. Um, then we uh, add, offer the support to boost the super to 13 gig, 14 gig. And then um, um, back then, you know, when we did that, we, we have a one additional copy, you know, the virtual net uh, to the device. Uh, there's a, a copy there. So we got it a copy to, uh, enable LKL to uh, be uh, like, to get to 23 gig compared to hosts of more than 30 gig. So we are sort of 70% of hosts. Um, but when we look at the CPU time, uh, it's still the, the LKL case, this is a single TCP stream, not perf. LKL burn one CPU, uh, one CPU saturated, the bottom of CPU. Whereas the host is, is only 30%. So LKL, um, LKL operation is still a lot more expensive than host, uh, 2.5 times, right? Our, our hope is to continue to tune the stack to uh, cut, cut the fat out to make it more efficient. And uh, one other area, the, uh, the, the, the this user stack and with uh, the viral net is there are a lot of copies involved. You guys probably are familiar with this. Um, in the, our TCP proxy setup, um, each byte transfer involves six copies. Uh, four of them is uh, through, the, uh, through the socket layer. So, um, and two of them is in the very own net uh, driver and device. Uh, so it depends on our CPU time. You know, if we, in this particular configuration, if we run a TCP stream, 30% of the CPU is, uh, is for copy. Uh, by the way, you know, zero copy has been, you know, a uh, holy grail, right? Um, I, I, I personally work on zero copy um, for many years, you know, I realized, you know, I really conclude this copy is really, if you don't have to do zero copy, you can't burn CPU, maybe just copy. The copy is simple. There's no dependency on software components Right, um, the, to get to zero copy is sometimes really hard. But here we, um, so uh, initially when I saw taking on the copy, uh, zero copy work here, I naively think 
that it should be much simpler than the real kernel, you know, going across uh, the user kernel boundary. Because the uh, LKL and the kernel, LKL kernel and the LKL apps, they are living in the same address space and same production domain, right? So there's no uh, issue with, uh, you know, you have to protect or page, you know, you have to page flip or whatever, right? But it turns out not that simple. So this is a transmit side. Um, because the problem I described to you previously, the um, LKL kernel has the, well, the, uh, many of the kernel, especially in networking code, it use the physical address or physical page. Uh, so LKL buffer actually doesn't, well, the, sorry, the, the user buffer allocated by the whole stack, when it gets passed to LKL kernel, it doesn't really work. The kernel, LKL kernel doesn't recognize this address. Um, so, um, the solution here is um, we have to use MMAP uh, anonymous page, which will return a kernel buffer to the user to use. And I, I believe this actually can, we can actually fix this to also uh, make LKL kernel recognize the sort, sort of host address. Uh, because the, I think the code is hidden now in the architecture code. So for the moment, we, we have this. And once we use, switch to use the MAP anonymous uh, buffer, it work, VN spy work. And our plan is to, you know, for zero copy is initially I thought I can just invent a new syscall and just grab the user address, use it here. But it doesn't work that way. You know, the SKB, you know, a lot of, well, SKB flags use the page, right? Even I put the, the uh, this, I want to do last segment, so I put 64K buffer address in the SKB head. It, when he eventually hit the variety driver, he insists on looking at uh, looking up the page page for the address. So, um, but the uh, the I think the good news is because the LKI is uh, no MNU fly memory, the VN price probably is much faster than the you know, normal SAD6 architecture. And another thing is the, you know, you all guys are probably all familiar with this issue, you know, when you do the zero copy on the transmit, you borrow the user buffer, right? Then you have to figure out a way to notify the user when the buffer is uh, complete. And here, you know, you have, one has to ensure the buffer, the, there's no other reference. You are the last reference to the buffer to, to safely um, tell the user to use the buffer. Um, my colleague, William Beef at Google, he, he actually has a set of patches. I've heard this checking the last reference is it, kind of hairy. So I think he has a patch, a uh, set of patch ready to go again. Um, so hopefully we can get that into the option kernel as soon as possible. On the receiving side, I, I think uh, you know it's much simpler. Here, you know, finally, I you know reap the benefit of the RKL running in the same uh, agile space. I think we can just create analysis, a new syscall, you know, return SKB to the user, and offer a set of helper function to extract the uh, address out of the SKB, uh, and um, we have to have another call back to the RKL kernel to free the SKB. But uh, no, yeah, we, we didn't get the time to finish. So I uh, also we we actually have the VNs by working uh, after you know using M MMAP anonymous. Uh, but we run some number on the RDMA uh, setup, but it doesn't show any saving in CPU time or throughput. So we have to investigate uh, what is IB verb underneath doing what is doing. Um, Another pain point about using the uh, kernel code in user space are the tools, right? We love and you know, we use to uh, do our work. Uh, if config is not, you know, not, not that, TCP down, all this stuff, right? It, it doesn't work unless we do something with it. Um, so it doesn't work because LKR is, you know, is, is a constraint by the single process agile space. So um, we really have to have this. 
at least not start. So we can see if there's any retransmission happening, you know, packet got dropped uh, by mistake. Uh, so we quickly hack up to a, a spawn thread, and that's why we create some simple command line. You can mount the FS or CFS, and you can CD and get to uh, whatever uh, you want to get to, and you can you know you can you can uh, check out the counters, you can uh, modify some tunables. So this is very cool. That I at least get us to be able to see like you know if there's any uh, you know checksum error or um, uh, TV transmission. And uh, we Google on the web. It looks like there's uh, somebody from, well, I guess the ROM kernel camp, they also faced this problem years ago. And their solution is uh, to sort of have a, have a way of doing a remote syscall. So they found the syscall from these um, set of you know, net tools to the LKL process, right? And then uh, I think that that is probably a general solution uh, that we, we will work on next. Uh, any question? Oh. Actually, this is. So, uh, can you talk a little bit more about your justification? What What are you actually trying to achieve by doing this? Is it because? So, my understanding is that it's it's difficult to get TCP updates quick enough for what you desire. Yeah, well, that's one one main well, that's one of the many main reasons. In right? what context? Uh, your data center. Yeah, inside end, end data systems. Data. Mm -hmm. Inside your data center, update our service, especially for zero day attack. We need to patch whatever code quickly. But that's actually only one. Another one is um, to save number of hops. So this is a sort of performance. Um, the uh, we normally uh, from the the foreign packet from uh, or from gas or from the, from outside, right? We terminate all the TCP connections in the Google front end GFE, and uh, my understanding is our engineers put a lot of. Them. I'm not you know um, I'm not from GFE team, but this team they put a lot of effort uh, resources on um, harden that GFE uh, to again you know. To, to uh, fight against the DOS, they will concentrate on the DOS. So there are a lot of re resources consumed by that. And our internal, the cloud group, they don't want to go through GFE. One, one thing is we can run through GFE. And GFE team also, they have a way of so maybe not patching the kernel quickly, but they can handle that. But for our internal cloud group, since the gas, the VM are live inside our data center. Right. For the routing purpose, we want to actually route directly the, the gas connection request or the, uh, the HTTP request directly to the backend server. Right. And here, um, the requirement is we cannot, I was told, you know, we cannot terminate, risk terminating the connection in the, our part kernel because of this you know, attack. And actually, we, uh, there's uh, multiple fronts, right? One solution is case splice, and Google is using case splice, but there's, my understanding, there are a bunch of constraints. Uh, so the reason I'm asking you this is uh, you're already investing a lot of effort into trying to make this thing work the way you want to and not to take a performance hit. And even after you've got all the offloads enabled in all the virtual devices, even after you get rid of the copies, even after you figure out how to deal with the uh, me memory management issues and whatnot, this is the tip of the iceberg. It is so much more involved and complicated down the road than you can even envision right now. This is not the way to do this kind of stuff. For example, you're going to want to get updates into this user space LKL, LKL thing, and you're therefore going to want BBR. Mm -hmm. for congestion control. Mm -hmm. BBR requires extremely accurate timers and uh, to do pacing properly. Mm -hmm. So all I need to do is to schedule your LKL process out for a couple of milliseconds and I've yeah. completely destroyed the performance of your of your I, I understand the you know so BBR is one sort of exception. The 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 previous the most of when I was in this sort of if you are on a few millisecond level that that's fine, right? 
So, yeah, I cannot speak for BPR, but I but think the BPR is where we're supposedly going, so you need to take this into consideration, <laughs> okay? Yes. But yeah, like I, I'm saying, you know, this yeah. is one of many issues that you're going to run into down the line. I, I really don't think you want to replicate the entire kernel in user space and expect it to work. Pacing is just one example of an area where timer accuracy is important for TCP. It's not just BBR. The whole TCP stack re re requires that timers are accurate and fire at the correct time for performance. Do you, and you, yeah, do you have a better suggestion? We, we are open. We, we haven't, by the way, we haven't invested. You know, why, aren't you just, why aren't you just pushing the transport into user space? Well, we, then we have to have all the glue code, right? To no. Wrap the you could encapsulate it in UDP. You no, just have no, to put the it. transport code, but the, uh, so one of the motivation is the mature TCP stack in Linux, right? So, you know, we don't have to deal with all the you know, potentially interoperability problems. So we want to use that code. But I don't know how, you know, how okay. better to cover out the code, right? This is why I explained in the beginning, right? Because the, the boundary of this stack can be very hairy. We haven't, we, we didn't try that. We want to move fast and there's something we jump on it right away, right? Maybe, you know, but we haven't really invested a lot of time. We still can change the direction. So, uh, describe exactly what you mean by terminated TCP connection. Well, it's a really a reverse So, so the, yeah. the traffic's coming out of the host, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you want to do with that traffic? The, the traffic coming out of VM, right. the gas VM, right? Mm -hmm. We want to actually, we cannot allow TCP packet from the gas stack can be any, you know, anything, right? So you're rewriting headers? You're no, no, we terminate that. So you receive right. it? Yeah, we receive, we terminate, then, you know, the socket data will get, you know, socket read, right? Read will get the data, then the application, the proxy can do whatever. Such as right. resend it back out an interface? Yeah, yeah, the, usually it's a proxy, and the, the, actually the main case in the future is uh, the proxy will actually run a different transport internally at Google. Right, to push the data through that transport. So, so sort of we, we have to terminate TV connection. There's no question about it. It's, it's and, kind, uh, it's kind yeah. of seems silly to me because you're, you're going into user space to get protection, whereas it is the kernel which provides protection for us with facilities like namespaces and separation and C groups and ways to chop pieces of the machine apart so that people can't hurt each other. And I wish you really well, had so, it thought about I think the fault tolerance or something, you know, if the process die, this user space process die, it, it's one process. It can be restarted quickly. Right. right. But the kernel, the whole thing die. So, um, can, I, can I suggest an alternative? Um, so you ask for an alternative. What if you just run the proxy inside another VM? Yeah, that's a, uh, well, I, so I think I have that here. Uh, so that has some other ramification. So some of our application, they need to link with, you know, it, we, we cannot set up a VM, right? Uh, it need to link, the application need to have a whole process, that process by itself. Um, but it could be a VM that only has a single, single process. Yeah, and so then you, you have isolation and you get another advantage. So all this work you're doing here to, to optimize LKL, that's a very narrow use case. But imagine if you were doing this in a VM and you were doing performance work to make, to make VM better, then we get a huge advantage out of that. Yeah. So, so yeah. I like that part of it, if you could put in the well, VM. I wouldn't say this is that well. So this is sort of two chain. We offer this solution. In some case, the, the people are better off using a VM hypervisor. Um, initially, when we start a project, there, there's a limited uh, deployment for the, this approach, a VM hypervisor. Uh, but compared is performance. But then <laughs> we find out we also have performance problem, right? So I'm not saying this solution is the best, but the, in some case, um, the uh, application deployment, they cannot use VM. They need to be just application process itself. Uh, other just, I don't know other justification there. You know, we are providing solutions, right? People see the solution work, then they can use it. So we can have some customers internally. Yeah, and I, I think the performance problem can be fixed. The timing problem, I still believe the, yeah, BBR is you know, good from Google. We'd love to have that work. But the majority of the 
uh, algorithms should work. They are not that sensitive, right? Um, but I don't know if there's other big architectural problem here hidden somewhere. Because we, uh, like I said, we only know about LKL, okay, uh, you know, for the past, well, earliest year, late last year. It seems to work, you know, the, the other than performance, right? We haven't really, we fixed a lot of bugs uh, initially. But since then, it's just uh, performance, and looks like performance number is getting better and better. There's uh, ongoing work to do, uh, to avoid the, or so the hard ILQ actually incur another context switch, but I think the maintainer is currently working on trying to save that context switch. So what other user space things typically run on these cloud nodes? What are other users? What space? other user processes run on these, these cloud nodes where you're gonna run the proxy? Uh, I don't know what you mean by user, other uh, users. What process? other processes than the LKL run on, the, in this, in, on this machine? Well, we have uh, we have this. Um, I don't know. If, well, in we, we call board. They schedule all kinds of jobs. And one or another. Well, I think another requirement why they want the LKL is um, they want to put multiple different application. You know, increase the resource utilization. Right. We used to dedicate single. So basically, yeah. almost anything can get scheduled on this onto this machine. Right? Yeah, that's the... That's the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So this means that if I can consume significant amounts of CPU on one of your cloud nodes, I can basically kill your HA proxy traffic. Yeah, but the, um, I think if you attack this proxy, we, we use container to limit the CPU time for this proxy, right? It's funny that you'll use kernel-based isolation and <laughs> controls for all the other aspects of this problem, but you won't use it for this termination issue. It seems so ridiculous. Well, I, uh, yeah, but the, the, our you know, support engineers have some issue. Well, I think that, like I said, you know, we, they are, we are moving uh, to the case price, but I'm not that familiar with all the constraints. Looks like there is, if we can quickly patch a kernel, right, maybe there's no need to terminate, you know, go through all the hassle to terminate at the user space. I just hear about this kernel update problem in many contexts, whether it's the Android and end user case, and now it, now the cloud nodes need need to get updated quickly to bu fix bugs and things like this. So if I can, I don't think it's a kernel upgrade uh, problem. It's a surface attack problem. Uh, right now, the GFE uh, is at, at the edge of the network at Google, and they protect Google for any kind of zero day attack like packet of death. But now if we extend the cloud and allow any traffic to come to any host in the fleet, then this attack can be fatal to Google, like shutting down all the machine Google. And we don't want that. Well the manager don't want that. So I'm just saying that I if, really if don't you think we have such a huge bug in TCP stack, but you know. If you schedule a job into one of these cloud nodes that had a bug, like you deployed some instance of the application that turned out to have a bug that would consume all the CPU and tie, tie up the resources on the machine, it would have now have the side effect of shutting down traffic for the guests. Yeah, we don't care. Well, That's a best default. I mean, yeah, we, we the, the, guests, the, the guests are a best default. But I'm saying, this, not problem, the, this, the problem, this, this side the effect would not exist if you solve the problem inside the kernel. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I'm a kernel engineer, right? Yeah. I'm a Linux kernel engineer. Actually, well, all now this you, now has you nothing are, to do with kernel, kernel engineer. engineer. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, this is kernel code, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to maintain it. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of issues. Unfortunately, the support guys, uh, you know, like Ari uh, said, the uh, the GFE is very expensive, and so we actually before this uh, deployment, this is not deployed yet. Uh, we have to deploy. They call it cloud front end. Right, and it's just very expensive. All the software filter stuff, right? Uh, so if the kernel can uh, be patched, the case splice, and the I don't know all the other attack. You know, the filter probably. You know, there's a new filter, efficient filter. You know that we can convince people to uh, adopt. Then we don't need this. But so far, it's not. You know, the my share is not there. Okay. Yeah. This next time, the coffee break, so let's talk to the speaker.